So welcome back to another episode, and this is one that I'm so excited to do. I have filmed this episode twice in eight years, and I never used the footage because I felt I never got it right. But today I'm feeling that kind of mood where I get to talk all about my love, my history with Fantasy Star Online, and it's... There's so much history here. There's so many stories I want to tell you guys, so I'm going to get right into it. So in 1999 and 2000s, I had the Dreamcast, and it was promising really exciting things about being able to go online. Now, there was a Sega network in the past, but I never had that, unfortunately. So I was very excited to get my 56K modem and plug it into my Dreamcast. I couldn't believe it. I remember playing Alien Front online, which was a tank game, running around, you know, and I was doing Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice to everybody. It was so stupid. But I couldn't believe that I could communicate with other players and play with other players in the world. It was unbelievable. Now, as you guys know, my favorite video game of all time is Fantasy Star 1. Discovered on the Master System, it changed my life. Little did I know that my life would be changed again by a little game called Fantasy Star Online. Now, I remember I was working in a software company and I was checking, I think it was IGN or something back then, and they had three screenshots of something called Fantasy Star Online. And I, my head nearly exploded. I'm like, Fantasy Star and Online together I couldn't believe it. It was like a dream come true. So this is crazy that I have this from 16 years ago. <laughs> I loaded the three pictures into Photoshop and we had a color printer at work and I printed it off because, you know, I was part of that day where I needed printed material. This was even before it made it into magazines. So I got these screenshots and I was marveling over them and I was starting to dream about playing online in Fantasy Store with my friends. And the possibilities were endless to me and so much imagination stuff going on there. It was quite a time. So I was part of a very big uh, forum at the time and we were all gearing up for Fantasy Star Online. And I went over to uh, visit my mom for Christmas and when I was there, I bought the Sega Dreamcast keyboard. I couldn't believe that the Dreamcast had its own keyboard. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was starting to prep everything. So I had the Dreamcast, I had the keyboard. The next big thing was, you know, a VMU and I got a VMU for it. We'll get to the VMUs later. And the day came and I will never, ever forget it. It's one of those magical moments in video game history for myself. When I first booted the game up, I entered everything in and I appeared in a lobby. Now, how many lobbies have you appeared in over the years since? Like, so many. It's, you know, everybody's just, yeah, they get into it and start swearing at everybody and start, it starts getting crazy. But it was surreal to me. There was that moment where I was like, I saw my character just show up, boom. And I was like, oh wow, this is cool. And then all of a sudden other characters start to load in as well. And all the friends I had in this forum were all of a sudden in front of me. And we were all a team. And I was like, I, is this real life? Or is this is this really happening? It was the big jump for me. It was like going from 2D to 3D. Now I was going, you know, to online. It's like the jump to go into VR. It was that kind of jump. And I was like, oh my God. And everybody's like, hey, so you guys want to make a team and go to this level? And it was like, yeah. And it was so wild. I remember the very first level we jumped into was the mine level. And we ran in. And it was the first time when... A monster would drop loot, and I'd never, this, <laughs> this should become, you know, a staple for online games for years to come. Uh, you know, and obviously there's online games before this, but this is my first online game. Where a, a monster dropped loot, and one of the guys in our group, I, I think his name was like Skylar or something, he ran up and grabbed all the loot. And we were all so fucking pissed off, we're like, what's the deal with this, man? Like, holy crap, what are you doing? And he didn't give a crap, he's just like, oh, you know, you just can grab it, you know. Anybody can grab it. And I was just like, oh, I was like, I'm a team player. So I'd be like, what, like you know, going, hey, I found this item. Do you want it? Do you? 
I, yeah, I started to realize that people were very greedy in these games and you know, the sense of honor was not there online. That was my first lesson about that. But it was an incredible night. And, inc and it was the first of many, many nights. And I stayed up till I think one in the morning and I got up for work at seven. And all I could think about was getting back in line and that's what I did. I got back in line and I would come home. So I just to explain, I would come home from work. I get home about five o'clock, quickly eat dinner. This is very much like the uh, Final Fantasy uh, 11 story. It was the same kind of idea. Finish dinner, get that crap out of the way. And I just game for eight hours straight playing Fantasy Star Online. And I started really making some serious friendships within the game. I, one of my good friends was too extreme and we were very, very similar. We were both very kind of, at the time, very punky types of guys and we had the same kind of upbringing and we were, it was really interesting. And this guy I could trust with my life and we, he followed me into Final Fantasy XI. He was like a brother to me within this game. It really was. And I remember one time he invited me down and he's like, you gotta come down. Uh, to, to the forest level. I was like, why? And he'd gotten a double saber. And it was the most exciting thing I'd ever seen. It was like, you know, Darth Maul's double his saber. I was like, oh my god, this is, this is so awesome. And then the hunt for rare items began. And something else I want to note about the beginnings of Fancy Store Online was we were paired with the Japanese players around the world. And I gotta say, the Japanese got the game a little bit ahead of us, and so they, I remember walking into games and these Japanese players had all the best gear, and we were, all, we were always so ja you know, jealous of the Japanese players, but the translations uh, within the game helped us communicate. It was, it was a pretty rudimentary system, but it worked. It really, really worked, and so after that, the whole online community really took off, and it was funny, I created a group called the Strikers. And why I created this group was because there were so many looters and there were so many people who would steal your equipment and they were just assholes. They were just, and you know, so what was, I know it sounds so dumb, but we, I remember some guy stole some equipment from a friend of ours and me and my friend Too Extreme were jumping. We were following him to all the different servers. He's trying to get away from us and we were very, very good at finding him. And we eventually harassed the guy enough that he gave all the stolen equipment back to a friend of ours. Uh, yeah, isn't that the funniest thing? We were trying to be, you know, we were trying to be good guys in a world in Fantasy Star Online that was not full of a lot of good people at times. There was a lot of really uh, terrible people within that game. And that's what started to happen. So there was the, you know, everybody starts searching for rare items within the game, but at that point, people start to find exploits within the game. And PK starts to be a huge thing in, in the game. Player killing. And there was lots of different tricks to player kill people. And people started to hack the game. And the whole hacking community came in. And it got brutal. And near the end of Fantasy Store Online, the first one, just near the end of it, it got to a, a disgusting level of, you'd be, in a game and people would break into your password protected games, come down to the planet that you're on and kill you and steal all of your equipment. It was quite frustrating. So Fancy Star Online was coming to an end for me. Fancy Star Online version two was coming out in Japan. And I did something that was pretty crazy at the time. I was able to get onto the Japanese websites create a, you know, a, what was that? A Hunter's Guild guide thing to be able to get in and play this game uh, with the Japanese players. I was able to use my credit card. I did a whole bunch of crazy things and it worked. And the game came out, I imported it, got it like day two, and I started playing with the Japanese players. All my other friends were left in the dust for now. And I was there and I started to really get into version two very intensely, more than version one. Now, when all the American players came on board, it, the level of hacking went up and it got really nuts. So here's the thing that was cool about version two. There was a lot of patches with version two. So being a version two player playing with version one players, I know that's kind of confusing. I'd be in a team with my friends on the planet 
We'd all be hanging out, having a good time, and we get a message saying, I'm breaking into your game. And I'd be like, fucking bring it on, clown. And he'd break, he'd break into our game, he'd come down to the planet, and I'd just stand there, and he'd use his lightning attack to try to PK me, to you know, kill my character, but it reversed and killed him. That was some of the, the early cool things about version 2. You were immune to some of the hacking. To some of the hacking. I remember, I, I, that guy must have been so surprised. It was amazing. But at that point, the hacking got like really nuts in that. I remember this one guy, Baruberry. I don't know if anybody remembers his name from back in the day. If you played Fantasy Star Online, you would know his name. He came into the lobbies and he his chat would come up and he'd be all in different colors. And we were like... Oh my god, this he was like a godlike character and he was hacking this game left, right, and center, and I was in awe of it. And he was probably the best hacker of the game. But at this time, another hack came out called Codebreaker. And uh, what people started to do was make their own weapons and make their own items and it's the, the hack that's you know, entering their own code to make stuff offline and then bring it online. And you had to be very careful or you get banned. And you never want to get banned. I, for myself, all I ever wanted to do was protect my character. I didn't want to uh, affect anybody else. I didn't want to play or kill any characters. I knew how to do it, but I never did it. I only did it to the bad guys. <laughs> yeah. But I, I started to make my own weapons offline. I started to make my own equipment and stuff like that. I, I entered a whole different plateau of the game. I ended up with every single rare item in the game, plus some. I started creating items that didn't exist within the game and giving them plus 99, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and I only kept these items for myself, I didn't distribute them, or dupe them, and that was the whole big thing, was duping items. I have a story, I have a story about Rob, this is, this is a funny story. This is before version 2 happened, we're still in version 1. And what you would do when you wanted to trade uh, items from one character to another, you'd both be in the lobby in Pioneer 1, you'd both be hanging out there, and what you do is you drop all of your items on the floor and your friend would stay in that lobby while you left with another character and came back and you picked up all the items. So I remember I said to Rob, I said, okay, listen, just so you know, I'm going to drop all my items. Stay in this lobby. You do not leave. Don't leave. Because if you leave, everything's gone. He's like, no, no problem. I said, seriously, I got so much rare stuff and it was all original rare stuff too. And I, I said, okay, everything's good, yeah, everything's good. Okay. I log out, I get my other character, I bring that character back, and I'm searching, I'm like, where's the room? I can't see the room. Where's the room? Where's the room? And nothing. And I'm doing it for like 10 minutes, and I'm like, oh my fucking god, he left the room. <laughs> I unplugged my 56k modem, I phoned him up. He answered. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I was freaking the fuck out. And he's like, and he's freaking out. He's like, dude, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What happened? He's sitting there, just sitting in his room, waiting for me to reappear. His fucking mother opens the door with a vacuum cleaner and knocks out the 56k modem out of the wall. <laughs> I was so fucking upset. I was so upset at that time. I think that's why I got into creating items later on because I was just like, fuck this, fuck this, this is nuts. In version two, you could trade items normally and stuff like that. It was a much more, uh, a better version of the game. It wasn't so ridiculous, but I have so many memories playing this game. I, you know, the very first time you fight the dragon, it's just extraordinary with your friends. And it was all about friends. It's all about that and and finding exploits in the game and I played this game. Uh, we're talking for Fancy Star Online Online One Version Two and uh, you know play, uh, what was that uh, episodes one and two, probably around 700 hours. It, it must be. I added up all the VMUs at the time and did all that. And I just wanted to show you guys something. This is kind of funny. All of my different VMUs. This is how many characters. So. It's one character per VMU. So here's my first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Seven characters that I had. 
And what's really nuts about this is, for this episode, I had to capture all of those characters on these VMUs. And it's 16 years later, and every character is still on that VMU. Pure miracle. I couldn't... I was like, oh, most of my characters are going to be gone. They're probably, you know, the battery died or something like that. No. There's still... Every character was still there. All the items I collected. Everything. And one of the main items that I always wanted was an Opa Opa mag. A mag is a, an item that sits on your shoulder. It gives you enhanced abilities. It's really a, a kind of small representation of your character visually as well. And the quest for Opa Opa was intense to, to finally to get it. He needed the tears of Opa Opa. It was, it was nuts. But I was able to finally get Opa Opa. And it was so warm my heart so much when I saw him that I still had the item in the game. I had a great time with the first one. I, jeez, I, I'll come back in the future and just do separate memories because I have so many of them. Now, I decided to go the Japanese way again for, you know, Fantasy Star Online episodes one and two, which were new episodes within the Fantasy Star Online universe. So there's different levels, new characters, new weapons, items. For me, pure heaven. So what I did was, I had a GameCube, and they were in my local mall, I could take my GameCube, and I'd drop it off for two weeks, I'd get it back, and they had modded it. So you could play Japanese games. It had a little switch back and forth. We'll get to that switch later on as well. And I transferred my Hunter's License, it was the Hunter's License, over to this one. And I got the keyboard that I've shown you guys before, the hybrid keyboard, just so unusual. And I could plug, and I had to get a broadband adapter for the GameCube, plugged in my, you know, at that time cable modem, finally. Didn't have to use the phone lines anymore. And I started to play this game long before it came to America. I, it was it was a really amazing thing. And I, I made it into a magazine. I was hanging out with everybody from PSO World. It was a, one of the biggest Fancy Star Online websites of the time. It was very, very active. It was very, very active. And uh, we all met in a lobby, and it was really weird to be one of the few English-speaking, you know, like, uh, people from the West playing the game, you know, because you know, it was only Japan only. And so I got some great friends in that version of the game, and I thought, ah, I can't wait till they link the American servers when the game comes out. We can all have a great time, and I'll be lightning years ahead. I was very competitive back then, very crazy competitive, especially with Fantasy Star Online. I, I wanted the best equipment, I wanted the best characters, I wanted, I was nuts. You don't know how many characters I took from level 1 to 100. And I could actually do it in like a day. I was so nuts about it. I was, anyways. So I had a great time playing the game, the new levels, everything was really, really wonderful. And then uh, they didn't link the American servers, which was just the biggest heartache ever. If you could imagine, it was the biggest heartache ever. And so I was stuck playing the with this, the Japanese players, which was great. But I had so many American f uh, friends that were coming on, and I could play with them. I had to do the most horrible thing. I had to buy the American version and start from the ground up again. And I did. And I, I got my character to level to level 100 in like a day, just like that. As I said, I was really crazy about it. And some ter something terrible happened though. Something terrible happened to this version and this version of my characters. I turned on my GameCube and the modding thing wasn't working. It wiped my memory card. Yeah, it wiped and and then my other memory card got corrupted. It it came back to haunt me. So uh, that's the one unfortunate thing is that I have all my Dreamcast characters, but I don't have any of my GameCube characters anymore. And that's horrible because I had everything. I had all the new characters, all the best stuff, and all of it's gone now. That is the one. When I went to do this episode, I think about four years ago, I checked into all my memory uh, saves and I was just gutted. I was like, ah, oh, that sucks. So, you know, uh, moving on, there was um, Fancy Star Online uh, episode three, uh, Card Revolution. Uh, yeah, Revolution. I never liked it. I was never a fan of it. I'm not a big card, you know, card game fan. I'm not. I'm not really into card games too much, but I appreciated it. I think a lot of people liked it at the time. I never played it online at all. The next up thing, and I'm not going to go too much into it, was Fancy Star Universe. I spent 
I, I didn't like the game too much, but I played it for like 250, 300 hours. I can't remember now. I, I played that a lot on the Xbox 360. It never was, it never felt as good as Fantasy Star Online. A Fantasy Star Online was really managed by Yuji Naka, and it had a certain feeling to it. I, I love the character designs. I love the world setting. I love the music. The game to me online and with my friends was perfection. I've never got my money's worth out of a game more. I think Street Fighter was another game I, and Final Fantasy XI was another game I got really my money's worth out of. But, you know, the Fantasy Star universe never seemed, it never quite lived up to the original in my mind. And unfortunately, my love is always for the original Fantasy Star online into the GameCube versions. It was such an incredible time playing with your friends. I I used to laugh in that game like nothing else. I I did all my socializing in the game. I just, you know, with my friends, that's all we did. Uh, I, you know, fuck dating women. I just wanted to play Fantasy Star Online. I remember it affected so many of my relationships like it did in Final Fantasy XI. I just didn't give a shit. My phone, you know, my, the 56K modem was plugged in. Goodbye world. Hello, Fantasy Star Online. What did you guys think? Did you guys have a, a good time with this game? Did any of you guys play it? It's, it's magical. And I, I know there's servers now, but I don't think I'll ever go back to it. My time was like 16 years ago with this game, you know, into 2002 in the GameCube version, all that, but I just thought I'd show you guys some other stuff. Here's the Japanese version of Fancy Star Online. I picked that up for pretty cheap. And here's the soundtrack that I must have listened to a billion times. Fancy Star Online, the original soundtrack, and it has some wonderful music in it. Some of, some of that boss music, some of that boss music is unbelievable. And Rob got me this. He found this at like a thrift store. And it is Fancy Star Online, the PC version, right here. And I like the big box. That's one thing. I love the big box. Oh, here. Here's something I want to show you guys. Here is, uh, this is the uh, Fancy Star Online versus Books exclusive edition. And this book is so worn out. It is so worn out. Out. I mean, the creases of flipping the pages so much, but the one thing that I really enjoyed about this is it showed some rare equipment. I think it was one of the first ones to show that you could get the egg blaster, you know, and uh, you know, the double saber and stuff like that. I was like, oh, look at all this stuff. And just to show you some of the mags that you could get, like, you know, obviously Opa Opa. Like, that's the one thing about Fantasy Star Online, it really catered to. Uh, the, the original fans of Sega. There was so many great things for Sega fans. It was, it was really, really wonderful. And, you know, the other good thing about this magazine that I really appreciate, uh, this uh, strategy guide, I should say, is it has a great history on Fantasy Star in general. And I would read this over and over and over again, even though I already knew the information. It was just, it was cool to see it all collected. And it was nice to see Fancy Star come back and you know, I often say that when I played the original Fancy Star It changed my life. It did uh, It was that, that big of a jump. Fancy Star Online was the same Feeling that I had when I played Fancy Star that fresh exciting feeling It was really something else and I, I love the strategy guide and and then I got the the big poster going on here Look at this. I had this on my wall for so many years. Can you see that? What a classic poster with the characters. And uh, for anybody who wants to know, is it, yeah, I had one of every single character. Every single character maxed. <laughs> it's like nuts. Uh, here's the official Dreamcast magazine showing Fancy Star Online. I read this a lot, a heck of a lot. And uh, being, you know, so crazy about the series, I had to get Fancy Star Online, The Book of Hunters, which is the art book. and. For anybody who was really serious about this game, you had to get the Book of Hunters back in the day. You, you really had to because it's funny, the character designs and the monsters, it felt really tangible, very real to me. And I really got into the world setting. I bought what they were selling in the creation. And let me say, there's a, there, Fantasy Star Online is just full of repetition. It's full of repetition doing the same, the forest level, you know, the mines, the caves, you know, over and over and over again. But 
It was so fun running around with your friends, discovering new weapons, new items, showing off to your friends the newest, greatest stuff that you got. It was that game and I had never played an online game. And the first game I play online is Fancy Star. Yeah, it all made sense to me. It was just a, a wonderful time and I'm so glad that I can finally come in here and talk a little about Fancy Star Online because I've been meaning to do it for so many years and I'm like, today's the day. What do you guys think of Fancy Star Online? I haven't played Fancy Star Online uh, 2. I, I'm hoping, cross my fingers, for a PlayStation 4 release over here. Let's see if it happens. So anyways, guys, until next time.